Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel Testing Mini Bytes. I am your friend Amudan Shaktivel, and in this video, I am going to cover the playwright weighting strategies. Right, even though playwright handles all the weights by itself, there are few other weights that could be useful in in certain cases. Right, not in all the cases. Um, but we are going to cover that so that you know if there is a need arise for you to use those kind of weights, you could you could be in a position to use them. Right. So, so there are a bunch of weights available. For example, wait for time mode, wait for request, response, URL, load state, and we will cover what are the different kind of load states available and what is the difference between each of them. We will also understand what is wait for selector and this wait for function, which which actually came from Puppeteer. So, so we will cover all of these in detail, but believe me, you won't be needing any of these in most cases. So you just need the playwright auto weights that will automatically kick in and you don't have to spend any, any kind of efforts from your side. So without wasting any time, um, so what I'm going to do, I'll go to the uh, documentation of Playwright. And if you notice, there is a section called as auto waiting. And if you notice here, um, if you want to perform a click, right? So Playwright will do all these checks by itself, whether it, the element is attached to the dome, whether the element is visible, whether the element is stable, whether the elements is ready to receive events, whether it is enabled to perform the action. So all these checks will be will be done by playwright itself. So we don't have to use any sort of waiting mechanisms. Even in the test that we write in the previous videos, we didn't use any sort of weights because it will be automatically handled by playwright. So you can see what you know what kind of checks it does for selecting a text, what kind of tech uh, you know checks it does for selecting an option. So you could go through this, but then, you know, it has all the information that you need. And this weights are most mostly enough, but not all the time. So for example, um, we will see one of the weights, right? So for example, I, I'm trying to load this website, right? So normally, uh, you know, playwright one, will only wait until it becomes loaded, okay? So let's say um, I try to wait for a locator page dot, um, it by placeholder and let's say username uh, one two three which which doesn't exist there um, dot uh, fill right and then I want to fill some values there good now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm gonna run this test and uh, yeah so this is wait dot spec dot ts so what if you notice very clearly so playwright will automatically wait until the load the page becomes loaded not you know, there's a fraction of difference between the page is loaded and then the actual content is coming here. Um, for example, in Angular websites and all that, there can be, uh, you know, subsections where it will be still loading. So Playwright doesn't really wait for all those things, right, by default. So in those cases, what you can do is you can tell the loading strategy to it, right? So for example, uh, what I can do is uh, I can tell uh, page dot wait for right and there is a something called as load state okay so there are a bunch of options available one of them is load which is by default okay if you don't you know in this line it will by default wait for loading state okay whether the page gets loaded whether the url you know you can see here okay if i if i click on refresh it will only wait until this becomes uh you know done but it will not check whether the dom is ready whether the elements are interactable and all that so that is one thing, right? That's the load state. By default, it will wait for load state to be load. The, the second type is you can also pass this, right? That doesn't matter. And you can also wait for dome content to be loaded, whether the dome contents are loaded, okay? Whether the, uh, you know, it doesn't actually check whether it is visible because an element can be loaded in the dome, but it, can, it may not be visible. So that is the second thing. And then there are other things as well network to be idle. For example, um, you know, there may be a lot of network calls that are happening. This is in case of Angular websites and all that, the page might get loaded and the dome might be loaded, but then there are sub certain subsections within the page will keep loading, right? Because they are making some network calls that are taking a lot of time, right? So, so it will take some time. So this network idle will make sure that all the calls, for example, if I go to inspect network, and if it reload, it'll wait until all the network calls here, you know, gets complete, okay? 
and then it will wait for a minimum of 500 milliseconds before passing this so i i will never recommend using this because there can be um, you know analytics network calls that can happen all the time right so so you might end up in you know uh, in a state where this is this doesn't get fulfilled at all so i will never recommend all these things uh, but in most situations you, you don't need any of these right so um, it is more than enough if you just use uh, load state which is actually taken care by default with this you can also instead of using separately you can also pass it as an options here for example you can say um, wait until and then you can say the same similar stuff right so dome content loaded whatever right so you could do the same things here as well but then this is again not needed but these things exist right you can also wait for the url wait for url right if there is a lot of redirections happening uh, you know if you are hosting it in azure and aws and there is a lot of redirection happening and you want to wait for a particular uh, piece of section to be visible you can you can do all that right for example i want to wait until login regular expression gets displayed right so you could do these kind of waiting strategies and then what else so the another important one is wait for time mode which might be something that you might use for example uh, in 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 selenium uh, we use whatever the explicit weight we want implicit weight whatever but then at some times nothing works and we will end up using thread dot sleep so this is similar to that so now i want to wait for three seconds um before trying to perform this action so this is not recommended because it increases the test execution time but then sometimes like selenium playwright in a, in a you know in a rare cases uh, doesn't really work the way that it wa we wanted it to work so sometimes we just applying a uh, you know wait for time out of one seconds will solve the problem uh, but it is not as frequent as we, as it happened in selenium but then it happens one or two times in my experience and we have used it wait for time out in those cases um, yeah and and you know i'll put something like the dot sleep that's just the way that you know uh, and here uh, apart from that there is two interesting cases that is wait uh, for request and response so there is something called as wait for request and wait for response. For example, when we try to load the RNHRM page, right? So there are a bunch of request calls happening. For example, let's say I reload this page and there is RNHRM logo.png. So this takes at least, you know, some time, like 700 milliseconds and all that to, to get, you know, fulfilled. So it takes almost 1.12 seconds. Um, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to show you the difference between um, wait for request. So wait for request, what it does is you can pass either the URL or the predicate. So in the URL, you could pass the string entire URL that you want that's here, or you could just pass the regular expression, right? So what this will do is this will basically and request.your i'll tell you right what it does so so what it does is uh, it will wait um, it will wait until this particular request gets triggered okay it doesn't bother whether you know the response is received it will only wait until the request gets triggered okay and it will also return you the request itself Okay, so and then you could find the request.url, you could find the request.headers if you want, whatever the things that you are needed. Okay, in my case, I'm just trying to, uh, you know, print the request.url. Let's remove all these things and let's try to run this and check what's happening. Okay, maybe what we can do is um, I can just check page short, um, get by alt text. I think this orange HRM logo. So let's see, HRM logo. Um, I already worked with this, so I'm just checking if it is visible. So 
so i'm checking with the time out of 5 milliseconds just want to show you guys the difference between wait for request and wait for res response so what i'm doing is i'm trying to check whether so i'm trying to wait until this request gets triggered but it'll take at least one second to fulfill it but in my case i'm just waiting for 5 milliseconds before checking whether the logo is displayed which will al always not be displayed right so so what happens it will obviously fail so let's see whether it is getting fail so wait for request the important thing is it will only wait until the request gets triggered okay so now it failed because only if the only if the rec this request gets a response the ui will display the logo then only this will pass so now instead of this okay if you also notice here it it would have printed log for us um you can also see it in the std out here so you can see this is the request url that we are trying to hit now uh, instead of this i want to say response the same response whenever there is a request that has this regular expression you wait for the response now what happens is it will give you a response from the response you could get the status code you could get a request the request that it that triggers this particular response you could go backwards from the response you could find the request that it you know triggers this response and from that request you can find what is the url of the request so now i am waiting for the response and now i am seeing whether this is able to get passed So now it will fail because anyways the the username one two uh, is is wrong so that's why it will fail but it it didn't fail in this place okay so that's why um you know the wait for response is something that you might obviously use but I don't see a use case for wait for request um and now uh, apart from this that there is also something that you could do with other weights for example uh, page dot we have covered all these things right so wait for uh, request cover, URL cover, uh, timeout cover, response cover, load state covered, and there is something called as wait for event. So you, you could also wait for a dialog to appear, right? You could also wait for a window, right? You can see what are the different uh, um, events that are possible. So you could go to the uh, docs, and then you could see, you can wait for a console event, you could wait for a crash to occur, dialog to occur, uh, don't control. You can wait for the download to happen. You can wait for this file chooser when you try to upload some files. You could also wait for that. But you know, most probably we will not be needing any of these, right? So maybe if you want to check whether the frames getting attached, um, whether the page throws an error, pop up, right? Request fail, response, website. So this these things are already there. But you know, in my opinion, I have automated at least two websites. I don't have a need to use them. But then you know, it's up to you. Uh, maybe there's something that you could use is dialogue and stuff like that. But yeah, you can you can explore more around this. And then there is something called as wait for selector, okay? Um, which is something that you know the playwright team is not recommending. Let's say you want to wait for a selector. Uh, let's say uh, the selector is something like this, the X path, right? You could wait for this. But instead of this, <coughs> what they are telling is you use this particular thing to wait for it. You can use await the page dot locator. You could use the similar uh, exports here, and then you could say um, uh, expect, or you can you can assert it, or you don't have to assert it. But then you could you could wait something like this, right? Instead of using wait for selector, uh, there is no need for wait for selector, so I wouldn't recommend using it. But when I checked one of the GitHub issue, they mentioned. Let's say you wait for one element and then you second you click you interact with the second element. In those cases, people are using it. But in, in my opinion, you could still go ahead and use uh, this particular way to wait for an element instead of uh, wait for selector. And because the let's say if you want to click on submit button, uh, playwright will automatically wait for it. You don't have to write any sort of waits. Um, most probably, if that if the, let's say some button is taking longer time, you could you override them with Let's say this is, uh, I want to wait for uh, 60 seconds. You can 
though obviously the good practice is to improve the uh, front end uh, response time but this is how you could you could add to that instead of you know you could wait you know try to do a lot of other ways but then the last and important not the important one, last one is a uh, wait page dot wait for function there is something called as wait for function uh, where you get the um, page and what you can do is um, you can say uh, let's say if you go to any websites right you can go to console and what you can do is let's say you want to scroll um, scroll by right scroll by sorry windows dot scroll by uh, 0 comma 600 if you want to do this so now what it does is it actually scrolled the website if you guys see um, you can see it here uh, i will put it here back i'll run the command again it does the scroll so whatever in selenium we would have used javascript executor and then used to scroll by scroll to and all that right you could do the similar thing with this wait for function i didn't find enough uh, references or examples so it was a little difficult for me to understand why they have these kind of things and then later i i understood you could use something like windows dot scroll by um zero comma 600 so now what it does is it will it will wait until this function gets fulfilled okay whether until the windows gets scrolled by that particular uh, stuff right so this this website doesn't support scrolling so you could uh, try this with uh, player i dot 10 right and uh, you, you don't need any of this and yeah so let's see so if notice it scrolled a lot um i think we used scroll by 600 that's why maybe yeah so you can this is just this right you could use scroll to as well and then uh something like this it should work i need to try to finding the element that doesn't exist so if you notice the scroll actually worked okay so there seems to be some difference between scroll by and scroll to but then in our case it really worked Okay, so that's all about different weights, but in my opinion, you will not need any of this uh, and most probably you will need only one that is wait for timeout and and in, in worst case, you might wait for a response to happen because that may take a lot of time and you don't want to override your next element uh, timeout uh, value. So in those cases, you could use this, right? So I hope this video is useful. I'll see you guys in another great video. Until then, tada bye-bye from Mumbai. Bye-bye, guys.